the goal of this project is to run um, electrical from this outlet here underground in conduit over to my shed here and then I'm just going to drill a hole and go inside and run the wire up the wall and put a light fixture into the shed so I'm going to be tapping into this outlet the conduit under buried it underground and then once I have the conduit buried I'll pull the the wires through okay so I've started to dig a small trench here I'm just using a little shovel and just trenching um, from right beneath this electrical outlet all the way over to the shed if you're using galvanized metal uh, conduit you really only have to bury it about six inches deep because if you were to dig there, a shovel's not gonna go through metal conduit. But with the PVC, Schedule 40 PVC, uh, by code, you're supposed to be um, 18 inches deep. Um, I'm doing this myself. I'm gonna bend the rules a little bit. I'm probably only gonna be about eight inches deep. I have these uh, um, irrigation lines here, three big ones, and I just really would rather not go under them. And it's such a short run. Um, I'm gonna probably only be about eight inches deep. So that's what I'm doing um, But if you're staying up to code, you're gonna want to bury it at least 18 inches deep for uh, schedule 40 PVC All right, so I've got my trench dug. It's about eight inches deep All the way to my outlet. So now I'll just go ahead and get my uh, PVC conduit cut and get that installed All right, I've got a um, 90 degree elbow uh, I haven't glued it on yet. I just put it on this a piece of conduit here and I'm just going to drop it down into my trench that I dug. We're just trying to get a measurement here. So I'm going to be cutting it there plus I got to put a fitting on so it's going to be about right there. All right, so this fitting here is going to screw right up into the bottom of our electrical box. Take this little plug out here. Got our piece of PVC that we bent with our heat gun. I um, actually did a video on that. Uh, we'll link it in the description and just teaches you how to make that offset bend so that the uh, PVC sits flush against your surface as it enters the box. Just gives a more clean look. So we're going to be gluing that in there. We'll just kind of dry fit everything here. And I've got my 90 degree elbow going to be going down at the bottom which will be buried we're gonna need to cut maybe about an inch or so off of this piece here Go ahead and mark on my elbow and on this piece exactly where I want it to be glued because I've got to have the angle right on that elbow. So now as long as when I glue it, as long as I line those lines up, I know that we're going to be exactly where we need to be at this angle. There it 
this. Just want to hold that for about 20 seconds. Let the glue set up. PVC cement is not actually a glue. It's a um, causes a chemical reaction with the CB uh, the PVC, so it actually melts the two pieces together. Go ahead and wipe some of this excess off here. All right, so I'll just be coming in here with another piece of uh, conduit and just run this this way over to the shed. My conduit laid down in my trench here um, I'm just gonna go ahead it's, it's a full piece so I'm just gonna go ahead and get a uh, rough cut of it uh, slightly bigger than I what I what I need um, so it'll be a little more manageable in this space tight fit down here but I'm not looking for perfection here. you're not necessarily looking for water tightness when you're doing this because all the wiring we're gonna be using is rated for uh, outdoor and it can get wet because there's always water is gonna build up in these lines anyway from condensation and stuff like that I'm going to start backfilling this trench in. I used my heat gun to bend this piece of conduit. Uh, it's going to be going right there. And so that bend gets it uh, past this lip, this edge on the uh, two by six here, and makes it flush with the wall of the shed. And then I'm gonna put this fitting on top and then I'll be drilling a hole into the wall of the shed here. I have another video, I'll link it into the description that shows how to bend the conduit with a heat gun. I measured up from uh, the floor here of the shed um, to where I'm going to drill the the hole for this outlet box. Uh, the box is going to go something like that there. I'm drilling an inch hole. That way uh, this conduit body here will fit through the hole. There's my bit. It's right at an inch there. be coming through with this from the outside but just to show you the fit it's gonna be nice and snug go ahead and bring that hole out a little bit Put some uh, silicone around there to keep it watertight. We're off by about a quarter of an inch, so I'm just gonna have to clip a little bit of this off.
take, gonna take some clear silicone and just put a bead around where uh, this conduit body enters the shed here. Stuff is pretty messy, so it's a lot easier if you just wear a glove and you can kind of really get a nice clean bead over it and smooth it out. And then you just wipe off any excess. It's a close up shot of that. Knock this out of the back of our electrical box. So you can see our uh, conduit body that we installed on the other side of this wall. And then I have this, it's like a bushing. Um, it's a conduit bushing and it fits right in that conduit body so my idea was to install this outlet box here and then put that piece there and then I'm gonna put a couple screws here straight into this wall so um, that was just my idea I don't know if that's exactly how an electrician would do it but it just makes sense to me probably don't even need to glue this in but and put a little PVC cement on it. I didn't even drill a hole into the wall here. I'm just kind of using the screw to tap itself in. There's one. Just one more diagonal to that should be good. All right. That's not going anywhere. This is the wire that I'm going to be using to uh, run underground over to our outlet box here. Um, this is weather resistant THHN. Um, it's uh, fine to use in conduit underground. Uh, this is 12 gauge because um, this will be going back to a 20 amp breaker. So you want to be sure that you're using the proper gauge for the breaker that's in your panel. All right, so I got my son Kingston here and he's gonna uh, be my helper. Actually, you can leave that one in. All right. All right, this is a 25 foot steel fish tape. Uh, it's made by Klein. You can pick these up at Home Depot, uh, anywhere from like 15 to $20 or on Amazon. I'll put a link uh, in the description to uh, this one here. So what we're gonna do is we'll be running the end of this fish tape into that conduit body all the way underground to our outlet box and then once we've run that all the way through we'll tie we'll tape our wires onto the end and pull it back through and one thing you want to do uh, before you start doing this is turn off the breaker to the outlet box that you're tying into so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go do that real quick electrical box our fish tape has uh, come through there so now we're just going to tape our wires onto the end of it
Best way to do this when you have three larger 12 gauge wires like this is I start with one. You kind of stagger them. That way you don't have one big clump right up at the, the base there. It slides through a lot easier. This is stranded copper wire. Um, so it's a lot easier to pull through the conduit than solid core would be. I like using it a lot more. I also have some grease that I would typically spray down the conduit to help it slide through, but there's not many turns in this run and it's very short, so I don't think I'm gonna have to use it. All right, so I'm on the other end, just pulling on the fish tape. And you just guide it through. Sometimes it gets snagged, you just go back and forth till it gets past the turn that you're trying to get through. Here's the other end, it just came through. Just undo all that tape and we are ready to make our connections and then we'll run this through into the shed, into the box inside the shed and then uh, screw that back in. That's it. I like pulling, you know, 10 inches or so of extra wire through just in case. Always good to have extra than not enough. Run that through to the inside. Close up our conduit body here. All right, I've backfilled all this dirt in over the conduit. All right, I'm out here at the outlet that we'll be tying into, and you always uh, want to check just to make sure that the breaker is off, but you just want to make sure there's no uh, electricity. You can use a tester like this. Uh, I'll throw a link in the description for this as well, but you just touch it. No beeps means there is no current to this here, so we're good to go. I put this in a while ago, and I actually ran out of wire, so. I used a blue for the hot and the neutral, and I just taped the hot to black just to know which one was the hot. A little bit of extra wire in the shed there, so I'm just gonna pull it through a bit. Okay. I'll go ahead and cut off some of this. Like I said, these stranded wires can be a pain to connect to the receptacles. So the trade-off you get from making it easy to pull through the conduit, uh, it's not so great when you get to this part. I gotta swap out this Wago for a five opening one because I've got to add another ground here, so. I like wrapping these nuts in electrical tape over the levers just to make sure they don't pop open.
All right. Let's cover back on. Make a pigtail for our ground here. These wire strippers are great. I'll throw a link in the description to these as well. So it's got, um, you can either strip a solid or stranded. This ground I've had is solid, so you just find the gauge, it's 12 gauge. You can clamp all the way down and just strip it right off. Super easy. These are the wire connectors I'll be using. These are called Wagos or Wagos. Um, they're lever nuts, so it's, you use these in place of like uh, the typical twist on wire ties and I just really really like these because they're so simple to use um, so like if you have five wires you've got a five wire connector two wire you got a two wire connector and you put your wire in you just slide it in after stripping it and I think you strip it tells you how many millimeters to strip off about that much you put it in the hole and then you just snap the lever down so I'll link these in the description as well stripped these are stranded 12 gauge on the stranded wires I just grab them with the end of my pliers and twist them makes it a lot easier to um, install onto the receptacle when it's twisted tight otherwise the strands kind of spread apart when you try to tighten them down Your neutral using red is hot All right, so I've got this pigtail here attached to the metal outlet box, so it's grounded. And then um, I've got my ground coming in from outside in the, the electrical box, and then my hot and my neutral also coming from outside. And then in the top of this box, I need electrical going to the um, light fixture. So we're gonna be bringing another wire, uh, Romex through the top here. Um, and that'll have a ground as well. So we need to tie all these grounds together. So I'm going to put one more pigtail here. Okay. And then we'll take our Wago nut. We've got one. Two. Three. Now we've got the fourth one that'll be coming from that Romex we bring in the top. So this is a um, this is actually for five, but I'm only going to be using four of them. So it's easy as that. A lot easier than wire nuts and takes up a lot less space in your box. I'm going to knock open this top hole for our Romex. Install a wire clamp. Still got to bring the Romex into the top of this outlet box, but I'm wrapping it up. I'm running out of daylight, so I'm going to go ahead and get this closed up so I can turn the breaker back on.
that's it. I'm gonna go flip the breaker back on and we'll make sure we have power. All right, I've got my son Kinks in here. I just flipped the breaker back on and he's gonna use our tester tool to make sure we have power. Good, check the bottom one. All right, we got power. Good job. There's this metal channel here. It's part of the shed and it's actually hollow. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the Romex straight up through to the ceiling. Here's the top of that channel, just pulling it up through. All right, so I've got the Romex pulled all the way through. Uh, I'm just gonna leave a little bit of slack so that I can tie into that electro boxer when I'm ready. And I'm gonna go on the other end and uh, start routing it over to the light switch. I'm using these uh, cable staples to secure the Romex to the sides of the shed. Uh, it has nails on it, but um, they hammer just fine into the plastic and they luckily they're not long enough to where they don't go through to the other side. So I'm getting kind of an idea of how I'm doing it. Here. So just nailed right into the plastic and just, you know, running it along the edge. And there's another uh, metal channel here. I'm just kind of running it through that. So yeah, I'll just probably put a staple every foot or two feet or so, just to keep it in place. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mount this electrical box here. Um, it comes with nails, but this is kind of a tight spot. It's gonna be hard to hammer this in, so I'm actually gonna pull these out and swap it with some screws. Right on that edge there. I think I'm gonna have to add a little piece of uh, two by four right here to screw that into. Here's a close up of that electrical box installed. So we will be coming through the top with our Romex. So on the backs of these PVC boxes, there's little knockouts. And if you just push with your finger, you can open them up enough to get these uh, wires through. one more uh, Romex coming into the top of this box. Uh, that'll be the power source. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these two switches wired up. This black here is gonna go on the bottom and then our hot coming in is gonna go on the top here. It's easier if you keep these loops following the direction that you're going to be turning the screw. The ground in neutral will um, we'll be twisting that together with the power line that comes in, and then we'll twist all the grounds together as well. And we'll need to add a. Uh, pigtail to uh, hook up the ground on both of the switches. Got this power coming down into my switch box. Got a lot of excess wire here that I'm going to be cutting off. I'm going to cut the excess off this power coming in here.
stripping off about 10 millimeters on these because I'm going to be using those Wago nuts again. So we've got one power coming into this box and two switches. So I need to make pigtails for each one of these switches to tie into this one hot here. one. There's two. So we've got one, two, three blocks that we need to tie together. Grab one of our Wago nuts and I've got one that takes three. neutrals together. So we have three neutrals. Right, and we just have our grounds. All right, I've got a couple pigtails for our grounds on the actual switches. So we've got a total of five grounds there now. Use our Wago nut that has a spot for five wires. All right, we'll just screw those two switches in. So now I'm going to connect this Romex to our electrical source here. I've got the breaker shut off, but just to make sure we have uh, no power running to this line. Yep, looks good. Tighten down and strip this sheet off the wire. Got our neutral going to the second post here on our receptacle. Right underneath the other neutral. hot on 
the second post right underneath the other hot coming in. And then we got our ground that's going to tie in with all the other grounds in that Wago nut. Sometimes you really got to maneuver these wires around to get them all to fit. All right. All right, I'm going to go turn the breaker back on and then we will check our switch box and see if we got power. All right, so the power's back on and switches are off, but um, we should have two hot wires on the tops of both of these switches. Yep. And then this wire down here, there should be no power to those yet because the switches are off. We're going to go ahead and leave those off for now because we have not uh, hooked up our fixtures on the other end of these wires. I'm just going to install this faceplate. We're going to be installing a light fixture. On the ceiling here, we've got this uh, rail that goes all the way across, and got my electrical box, and then these cutoff screws are actually um, what you'd use to uh, install a toilet on the ground. So it's got the head that looks like that. I'm going to go ahead and knock out one of these uh, corners. I'm gonna go ahead and get the, put a washer with a bolt or with a nut. Go ahead and get that screwed on first. I'm actually just going to use one bolt. It's kind of hard to get two bolts installed because they, they want to pop out of the rail there. Um, but one is, I mean, that thing is super sturdy with just one. I'm using yellow uh, Romex. Romex, this is 12 gauge. It's uh, two wire plus a ground. And I've also got one of these clamps. So the wire goes through that clamp and then this tightens down on the Romex and then this whole assembly screws into the hole in the uh, electrical box.
I'm gonna install a ground screw. Take that ground wire and attach that to the ground screw on the box. This is what'll hold our fixture. So you've got the um, your hot and your neutral on here. It's very simple. You've got your gold screw, which is your hot wire, and the silver screw is the neutral wire. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get a light bulb and screw it in and then we'll flip the switch and make sure we've got power in here. All right, gonna go ahead and flip the switch. There we go, we got light. All right, now I'm just gonna take these uh, cable staples and just tack the wire all the way down uh, so it's attached securely to the wall of the shed. So that switch there uh, controls the light fixture that we just installed. And this switch over here is going to control a farmhouse style light that we'll install here on the front of the shed. Uh, we haven't picked out that fixture yet. So um, I'm not going to include uh, that portion in this video, but uh, it's the same basic process that we did to hook up the other fixture, just two wires in the ground. All right guys, that wraps up this project. Uh, if you could just do me a huge favor and like this video and also subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing. Uh, it helps us uh, stay motivated to make more content like this. So thank you very much. See you in the next video. I've owned the shed for a couple years and I've always wanted a light on it. So when I come out here at night, I can see. So I just wanted to see what it looks like at night. Let there be light. I put a um, LED bulb in it. It's much brighter. Please excuse the messy shed. I need to clean up. But I can see now.